All right, so in this video, let's take a look at uh, gesture recognizers. And this is uh, yet another way you can kind of uh, control anything in the scene. Uh, of course, in this case, it'll just be our player. And uh, what we'll do is we'll get away from uh, testing the touchdown location. So let's just comment all that out. And if you do that uh, slash with the uh, asterisk after the slash and then one uh, right before it, you can comment, comment out uh, big old chunks of code there, right? Even other comments, which I guess you can't really comment out a comment. But uh, all right, so what we're going to do is start over here at the top of the file. We're going to declare... Uh, our gesture recognizers up here, so we're going to do this right. Uh, let and let's call this swipe, swipe right, and then rec just short up recognizer there. Okay, and this is going to equal a UI swipe gesture recognizer. Uh, I'm actually kind of going off some of my old code here, code here, and uh, I didn't actually do something like that before. Uh, you know, you don't always have to do that. Uh, so we'll just leave it as is and. Uh, now that this is, well, you know, let's go ahead and put in uh, a left one as well. All right, so we've got uh, swipe right and swipe left. And what we're gonna do is in the did move to view statement, uh, define them further. So we'll just come over here and we're gonna write swipe right rec add target. And the target class is gonna be ourself makes sense right and then the action is going to be the selector that runs when the uh, gesture has been recognized we're just going to write uh, a little hash mark there selector and as of um, swift 3 you do need to put in here uh, the, the actual class itself so game scene dot and then swiped right will be the function that we're going to write uh, to run when that has been detected okay but um, just <laughs> writing the word right in here uh, doesn't make it so that it is actually a right uh, swipe gesture recognizer. What we need to do is put in here dot direction and then put in there dot right. Okay, and you might have glimpsed some of the other options in there like up, down, and left. Okay, so we're going to put in here self dot view. Do you have to put an exclamation mark after that? And then we just write add gesture recognizer and so let's put in there swipe right rec and the uh, the warning we're getting here is just basically saying that um, that uh, it has no member swiped right okay it's trying to suggest something that uh, is actually not something that we want to put in there so what we're going to do is come down here right uh, swiped right and if I there we go actually make that into a past tense verb it should work and uh, in this case we don't really need to um, uh, pass in pass in any information about uh, the gesture recognizer. I'll, I'll show you guys uh, one that would do that. But uh, you know, in this case, we're just going to put uh, opening and closing parentheses, and you can see that uh, it's no longer complaining that uh, we've written this wrong or, or left something out. Uh, so let's go ahead and just do our left one real fast. I'm going to copy that, paste that over there. Uh, I'll make one that's called swipe to left, and of course, we want to change this to being left. Okay, come down this way, swiped left, and just for right now, let's just put in here print. One uh, there we go. Okay, that'll be enough to test with. All right, so let's keep our eyes on the bottom. Went left, so obviously I'm swiping to the left. Went right, and if you want a little very easy coding challenge, see if you can make it make the up and down versions of that. Uh, so I'll, I'll let you pause the video there, but I'm gonna just keep on going. Uh, let's put in uh, one of those gesture recognizers where we actually are gonna pass in information uh, as a parameter here. So uh, what we're gonna do is make another one of these guys. It's gonna be a, a rotation gesture recognizer. And to do that, I'm just going to come over here to the top. Let's, and let's just call this rotate rec. And this would, of course, be a, a, a gesture that the user is, you know, kind of basically taking two fingers and uh, rotating on the screen, right? So this will be a, a UI rotation gesture recognizer. And we'll come right back on down here again. Uh, this time around, let's see. 
I'm going to write rotate rec dot add target. Yet again, it's going to be self. And the action, we just put in here this hash selector. Okay, game scene. Could have actually copied a lot of this, huh? A rotated view, and here is where it gets a well. This so this is gonna be the function name, and here's where it gets a little tricky. All right, so do uh, an opening parentheses, do an underscore over here, a colon, and then finish off with three parentheses. And you'll notice anytime you kind of just uh, go left and right here. See how I'm doing that? It's uh, it it, and I'm just using the directional arrows on the keypad. It's highlighting the closing uh, parentheses, so that's uh, just kind of a convenient way to check. Hey, did I get enough in there? Okay, and uh, then what we have to do is actually go and write that function. So we're going to come on down here and try to keep all of our functions together. Actually, you want to see a neat little trick? If you um, if you write uh, two slashes like that and then all in caps mark, okay. And then you can put in here uh, gesture recognizers, right? Sometimes I'll even do crazy stuff like this. Okay. And not only are we, you know, able to see that this is a little bit of a, you know, a, a break in our usual code, but look at it over here at the top and you can jump around uh, to all of your functions over here. Uh, so, you know, if you're kind of just tired of kind of reading them all in this single column over here, I think it's a little easier if you, if you do have something like this and then you can kind of, you know, guide your eye to the right and just see, hey, look at that. That guy's kind of popping out there. And then you'll, you'll know how to jump right to your gesture recognizers. Not a big deal in uh, in this file, of course, but, you know, when you have um, you know, you know, you know, 10,000 lines of code, it's uh, quite important. Okay, so uh, rotated view, and we're going to put in here sender. Okay, so, again, there's that uh, that underscore over here. The most important part, though, is, is the sender that uh, is coming in. And basically, it's... It, you can think of it as just the thing that, uh, that that triggered this function over here. And we do have to specify that it is going to be this uh, UI rotation gesture recognizer that um, that uh, got the party started. And uh, But then from there, what we can do is we can say if uh, sender.state equals dot began. And you'll notice you get some other options over here like ended, failed, changed, canceled, recognized, stuff like that. And to be honest, I haven't tinkered with all of them. I usually just uh, deal with the uh, began, changed, or ended. Uh, so let's do that. Let's put in here uh, if, if changed, ended. And then you can get a sense. Rotation began. And we'll also um, print out some um, more useful information about it. Watch this. So I'll put it there that changed, but then print uh, and then sender uh, dot rotation. Okay, so we'll actually get back some numbers uh, tied to the rotation, right? So let's do it. Publish this, and you're gonna have to hold down the option key on your keyboard uh, to make this uh, rotation happen in the simulator. Okay, so go over here and. Oh, you know what? Did I? I don't think I added the gesture recognizer, did I? Yep. Let's uh, let's go ahead and do that. Self dot view rotate rec. There we go. All right. Always got to add them, and usually you do have to uh, remove them too if you're going to change scenes. I'll explain that in a moment. But uh, okay, there we go. So now you can see that uh, obviously we got the rotation began, and then. It, it, Every frame that uh, you know I'm rotating around, it's saying rotation change, and it's and it's giving these I mean, these numbers based on the rotation, right? So what do we finally end at over here? These are probably in what radians, so you're not going to see like um, the values in degrees. Let's see. Oh, I guess it just kind of keeps going around, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> you know, what? if you wanted, if you think that actually was a question you were thinking about. Let's go over here to the property. Let's see, the rotation of the gesture in radians. Okay, so that, uh, that answers that. And you know, what kind of teacher would I be if I didn't uh, show, show you guys how to convert that real fast? Because uh, if you're like me, you can't handle anything in radians. So I'm just going to paste in here the code uh, to do that. And here it is. You can just set up uh, another variable, uh, let rotate amount. And then uh, Swift has this uh, these built-in measurement um, 
conversion functions. Uh, measurement is a model type that holds a double value, so whatever. So uh, you put in here the value and you have to specify it's, that it's a, a double type, basically a double precision floating point value type. Fancy, <laughs> fancy uh, <laughs> definition for basically what's not an integer. And then uh, sender dot rotation. Okay, that's what we had over here. And then the unit that it's in, so that's uh, dot radians converted to uh, dot degrees, uh, dot value. Okay, so uh, ultimately what we're going to get now is, let's get rid of our uh, the other one, is, uh, is the degree amount. Okay, now isn't that a lot more friendly? Look what's going on. So, you know, I can't remember exactly where I started here. All right, I'm going to start here right kind of at the top. Okay. Again, hold down option. All right, so by the time the the uh, circle with the cursor over it gets back over here to the top, we should be at right about at 360 or uh, close enough. Okay, so <laughs> I think it's working. Um, and uh, yeah, you you know, there's all sorts of things you can do, you know, based on you know, changing it, of course. And, and you know, one of them is just adjusting the uh, you know sprite itself. So for example. Uh, you can have the player dot ro z rotation, and again, you know, consult this over here. Now, what does it want? Okay, it wants in ro in radians, so which is convenient. You don't have to do any conversion then, so you just put in there sender dot rotation, and uh, this would have been a lot more interesting to look at from the start, I suppose. Uh, but uh, we should be able to rotate it now. Now, remember with our physics, we said our physics properties, we said we can't. You're not allowed to rotate the body, but that. All changes when you're when you're doing something like rotating the sprite itself. Okay, so here we go, um, and and uh, this might seem a little counterintuitive, right? Hey, wait a minute, he's rotating in the opposite direction. Well, you can just put a, a negative sign or a minus sign in front of that, and um, that would uh, reverse it to probably something that seems a bit more uh, natural. Okay, so do it again, and sure enough, now our little guy is kind of following right along with uh, yeah the rotation. Pretty cool, huh? Is it cool? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so let's take a look at one more gesture recognizer. Now there's plenty more, but um, I don't think we need to go into too many here. This is just gonna be a simple tap one. Okay, so come in here, UI, uh, tap, gesture recognizer. Okay, come on down this way. Um, this time around, let's try not to uh, forget to add it and you know what I think you've seen me type enough setup for these is basically the same so I'm just going to copy this in we've got add target again self game scene dot tap view so we need to write that function but the neat thing about the tap gesture recognizers is um, you can uh, you can specify the number of touches required so in this case it's just one but you know you could put in there two okay and that in that case somebody has to be uh, tapping with two fingers and then also the number of taps required so Let's see if I can simulate this <laughs> with three taps. Uh, and we'll come down here. Do, 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 do. All right. And we'll just say tapped view. I don't think I need to know anything about the sender in this case. So I'm just going to make it tapped um, three times. I don't think I've ever tried to simulate a two finger three tap. <laughs> Should be possible if I just click enough times, right, with the uh, the option key held down. But here we go. Well, first off, let's just click three times. Okay, all right. So you're not seeing anything down there. Okay, sure enough, there we go. I did it. <laughs> I wonder what the space, be the timing between them. They tap, tap, tap. This. Oh, that triggered it too. And there was a. I think it was fast that time. So anyway, um, you know, that's uh, that's. I would say tapping <laughs> multiple times with multiple fingers is probably one of the more uncommon <laughs> control systems for a game. But uh, hey, who knows? You know, I mean, that's you have to put a big thing up here. Not tapping with enough fingers. Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's take a look at um, cleaning up your gesture recognizers, and. Uh, and this, uh, let's see, we'll just put a function in here called clean up. Okay. And, uh, you know, we're not, I don't think we're going to talk about transitioning to a whole other scene in this series of videos. Uh, a lot of times you can get away with just a, a game built entirely with your, with one game scene dot Swift file. In fact, I think most of the ones I've, uh, yeah. Other than having like maybe a scene, uh, a scene dedicated to, uh, 
to a home menu or something like that. For the most part, um, I think, yeah, you can just use the game scene. But uh, if you did transition to another scene or something like that and you, and you felt like you needed to clean up uh, your gesture recognizers, and you probably do need to because um, let's say you went from game scene.swift to home menu.swift, but you didn't get rid of those gesture recognizers. If your home menu.swift doesn't have the same corresponding functions, uh, uh, the, 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 you'll probably end up with a crash if somebody tried to trigger those same gesture recognizers. Um, they, they don't automatically get cleaned up, at least as far as I've tested recently. So uh, easy, easy bit of code you got to write here. Just write for gesture in self dot view dot gesture recognizers and that's not the perfect way to write that code watch what's going to happen they're going to warn me that i didn't get this right here we go but watch they'll figure it out um so it, it's like well the view is optional but the gesture recognizers is not i don't know uh but anyway what you can do from that point is then just say uh self dot view dot remove gesture recognizers and then you just put in there your gesture and uh you know if we wanted to uh see this work you know what let's just throw it in our update statement and uh, and pretty much as soon as we add them they're going to be gone again so we won't be able to test right okay so there we go. No rotation. Nothing's happening over there. Uh, so, yep, they it looks like they're gone. <laughs> so I'll put a little note on that that says, uh, only need to call when presenting a different scene class. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I think we've uh, we've covered enough with our gesture recognizers. I'll give you guys one, kind of one last little look over here. Doo, 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 doo. And then again, there's the, all the fun code that made that happen, marked off and separated. Now, of course, you can always get all the, uh, the source files over at uh, cartoonsmart.com uh, um, if you're watching this someplace other than cartoonsmart.com. <laughs>